Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review. And today we're taking a look at something that is super exciting. What we have here is the brand new NECA Ultimate Feral Predator based on the way the Predator looked in the movie Prey. Oh man, that movie was absolutely amazing. I'm so happy that NECA did a figure of it and I'm even more happy to have it in hand. Before we get into the review, I wanna give a huge thank you to the folks over at AV Pop Shop for sending this over to me. They got one of these early and they sent it out to me. I really do appreciate it. Be sure to check them out. I'll leave a link to their Instagram in the description below. They're based out of Lancaster, California. Met them at Comic-Con this past year, and they were awesome folks. So yeah, huge thank you to them. But let's go ahead and get right into it, starting off with the packaging. The packaging's pretty basic. It's just a black background. It says Prey, Ultimate Feral Predator. On the side, same kind of thing going on. And then down here at the bottom of the box, we get some credits for the people that worked on the figure, and we also get some instructions for some of the accessories that he comes with. On the back, we get a look at the figure, which is awesome, and then a little bit of information about this particular Predator. Down here, it gives us information as to what comes in the box. And then, of course, like all Ultimate NECA figures, you can open this up, and you get a look at the figure on the inside. And then on the opposite side, we have a shot of the figure itself. And yeah, look at that, man. That is looking freaking awesome. Cannot wait to open this up. I'm a big fan of the NECA Predator line. Um, I love the figures quite a bit, but, you know, with a lot of the stuff that they put out, they kind of feel similar, you know? There's a lot of, like, reuse in that line, but they're dope. I like all of them, but it's cool to get something that's going to feel completely new. As far as I could tell, the sculpt is completely original on this guy, and it looks badass. But enough about the box. Let's go ahead and get this guy out and take a look. Dang! Right out of the box? This thing is a straight beast. Check him out, man. He came out so good. I love this design for a Predator. I love the design and the whole concept behind this movie. I think that's a genius idea, putting like Predators into different time periods and different settings and having him go head to head against the inhabitants of those settings. I think that's perfect. And I love the fact that they started with Predator or a Predator fighting against like some indigenous people that don't have like a lot of advanced weapons or anything. And they kind of match that whole energy with the Predator himself. He's kind of stripped down, doesn't have a whole lot of armor or anything like that, and as a result, it makes it to where the figure is actually a little bit more fun to play with than previous Predator figures because he doesn't have as much armor. So it does seem like he has a little bit more articulation going on, so that is really cool to see. But yeah, man, this design is awesome. I love the way that NECA did the skin. It kind of has like a, like a bit of a wet look to it, almost like He's sweating or something, or he's slimy, or I don't know. It looks crazy. It looks very lifelike, you know? But man, look at this. That's a great looking figure. And then he does have his crazy shield blade thing. And that plugs right into the arm, which is really cool. And it plugs in there with no, not too much of a hassle. And it stays in there securely, so that's nice. And then on the back here, this is something I've never seen on a NECA Predator figure. You see as this backpack right here, it's not pegged into the back, it's actually held on with a magnet. And the magnet's pretty strong, it keeps it in place pretty securely. And then he does have the removable mask, or the bone helmet thing, and look at that. Bam! Check out that ugly ass dude right there. <laughs> and they did a great job with this bone mask thing because it comes on and off very easily, but it it clicks onto his head really securely, so you don't have to worry about it falling off or anything like that. So that's nice, and it sits on there very naturally. It looks good, doesn't look awkward or anything like that. But yeah, man, this is a, a beautiful looking figure with a whole bunch of great detail. As always, no surprise at all, NECA completely killed it with the sculpting and the design and all that stuff. So yeah, man, I, I love the way this guy looks, and he's a whole lot of fun to play with, so... Right out of the box, I'm super impressed with this guy, but let's go ahead and get in close and take a look at the details on him, because like I said, NECA completely killed it with all that stuff, and it looks amazing. You know, one thing I really love about looking at figures based on movie monsters is that when they're done as well as this guy, when you get in close, you're able to see a lot of details and design elements that you may have missed in the actual films. Like, for instance, in the movie... <laughs> the entire time that this guy's running around, it's very dark. He's like in dark forests, and then like at one point, he's fighting a bunch of soldiers, and it's all smoky. You really can't see all the crazy details on him. But then when a company like NECA comes along and just, you know, does an incredible job on a figure, you're able to, to get in there and just see all the cool things that you may have missed from the film. Like, it kind of adds like another level of fun to it, you know? 
when I took this out of the box, I was I was loving it. I was posing it around, and right away I was like, man, this is awesome. But then I started to look at it, and I was like, I, I, I didn't notice this, you know, or like, what is this? Or, you know, there's all these little elements where they kind of caught me by surprise. And that's just like, a, it adds to the fun of the experience, you know? It's very cool. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into it. Starting off with this crazy ass looking helmet i freaking love the design of the helmet no eyes it's very creepy and they did a great job with the sculpting on it as you can see it does have a very nice bone texture to it i don't know what the hell kind of creature he got this <laughs> this helmet from but it is awesome it's got a crazy looking hole like right in the middle kind of looks like a mouth or something but yeah look at all the detail on that crazy looking helmet and this does come off with no problem at all I like how it kind of clicks into place, so you don't have to worry about it falling off, but when you want to take it off, it comes off with no problem at all. And check out this crazy looking head sculpt. Damn, that's dope. I love the eyes. His eyes kind of look almost human or something. Looks really dope. They, they did some nice work on the mouth too, although it is a little sloppy on the tooth there, but for the most part, it does look really good. But man, I like the way this guy's skin looks quite a bit, like the different colors in there the different shades of red and brown and stuff especially up here look at that 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 looks crazy man I, I like that a lot and then he does have his dreadlocks back here and then check this out he's got some weird ass like back <laughs> upper or lower neck hair I don't know what the hell that shit is but it looks crazy but yeah that's one thing where I was like man what is that and then moving down the back here oh look at this I love the way his spine looks. That looks so creepy, you know? And then he does have his backpack thing that you are able to attach right there by a magnet. And it holds on there nicely. You don't have to worry, you don't have to worry about it falling off or anything. So, very cool. But, yeah, check out the skin on this guy. It looks crazy. And then he does have, like, these little silver bits here. And, you know, I'm not 100% sure, but I think... This is like battle damage, kind of, that he repaired. Like, maybe he got slashed, and then... I think that's what it is when you see those silver lines on Predator figures. It's like a, like a Band-Aid or something, but... Yeah, man. And he has them all over, too, so... Looks like he's been in a couple of wars. Look at that. I love the way the colors blend into each other here. Then he does have that stripe down the front, too. That's crazy, man. What the hell is that? Oh, I love this right here. I love how it kind of has a tiger stripe kind of vibe to it right here on the side. And then the skin does have like a very nasty wet look to it. Looks super dope. And then he the only the only thing on this figure that doesn't look super primitive and kind of has like an advanced technology kind of vibe to it are the forearms. So here's the first one here. And you can see there are some nice details in there. It does look really good. On the outside of the forearm, there's like a channel, and that's where you could plug in the shield and the retracted shield, or shield blade thing, whatever you want to call it. And check out the hands right here, some nice detail there. I really like the way that his skin looks and the pattern and stuff. It just looks so crazy and creepy, you know? And on this side, we've got some more advanced technology. Look at, oh man, look at all the sculpt work in there. Really great detail. He does have these blades, Wolverine style. These are able to come out too. So, But I like the way they look. They're probably going to stay in most of the time. Man, there's a lot of great stuff going on here. And then around the belt too, he's got some really cool stuff look going on. Check this out. A little bit of metal on the front. Some like other material. Looks like he just found this shit laying around. And then on the back, he's got some type of animal skull. He killed a couple of animals, and he's like, ah, oh, that's boring. Let's kill some people. I think in the movie, he started off by killing a snake. I like how it gradually showed him just kind of leveling up with each kill. Then he's got, like, a net back here. Oh, shit, what's in here? Oh, it's kind of like a bomb or something. There we go. Dope. I don't know if it's a bomb, but it's like a some type of sphere. Ooh, some more battle damage right here. But, yeah, the belt is really cool. And then the feet have a little bit of sculpting work too. His ankles are wrapped. There we go. Yeah, so yeah, man. This is a, an amazing looking figure. A whole bunch of really... Oh, shit, look at that. A bunch of really great detail. Some amazing sculpting. Some amazing paint work. 
And yeah, man, having a figure that's as good as this really increases my appreciation for the design and the entire movie, you know? So really good stuff, beautiful looking figure. And then for accessories, he does come with a bunch of really cool stuff, including multiple sets of hands. So first off, we have a pair of fists, and then we have a set of open hands, and then we have three different sets of gripping hands that could be used to hold on to the various weapons that he comes with. He also comes with three different faces, like uh, interchangeable mandibles is how they kind of list it on the box. We have three different options. All of them are crazy. <laughs> He's basically just, all three of them are him screaming just at different levels. A bunch of different display options just for the head when you remove the mask, you know? So that's so cool. And then he does come with a bunch of weapons, including his gun. I'm not 100% sure what this thing is called, but it does look cool. Has a bunch of great detail. He looks awesome holding it. And there's a piece of metal in there somewhere, so you could kind of like mount it on the magnet on his back. It doesn't stay on there as well as his backpack, but it is an option. And then he does have his spear. The spear is really nice. It's a two piece thing. It does come apart in the middle, but when it's together, it looks really dope. There's a whole lot of details in there. As you can see, like the handle piece has some like inscriptions and everything. It looks really nice. And then he does have a retracted version of his spear. And this goes onto the hooks that clip onto the back of his belt. So that's a cool way that you could store that. And then he does have his crazy ass like blade shield thing that plugs into the side of the arm. This has a whole bunch of detail. It looks crazy, man. The amount of sculpting work they put on this guy is really, really impressive. And then there's also like a retracted version of the fan blade thing that goes mounted onto the arm. So it's nice to have both different options. So yeah, he does come with a bunch of really dope accessories. There's a whole lot of different display options, a bunch of different weapons, hands, everything that you could want, he comes with it. Alrighty, so now for some size comparisons. Here we have them alongside some of my favorite Predator figures. On the left, we have the Shaman Predator. On the right, we have the Yellow Lantern Predator. And then here we have them alongside two more of my favorite Predator figures. On the left, we have the Alpha Predator. On the right, we have the Laser Shot Predator. And this new Prey version is definitely going to join the ranks of my favorite Predator figures in my collection. He's definitely going to end up being like top five or something. And then here we have them alongside a couple of other Predators. And I'm not even 100% sure where these come from. I think the one on the left is from... The most recent movie before Prey, I could be wrong though, and the one on the opposite side on the right is one from like Predator 2. Isn't he one of the ones that popped up in the spaceship at the end or something? I could be wrong, let me know in the comments. And then here we have them alongside the Nada Toys enveloped Yamo figures. And man, imagine one of these Predators in like feudal Japan. I think that would be like another really cool setting for a story like the one that we got in Prey. <laughs> Dang! This dude is pretty tall. I didn't think that he'd be as tall as the creature from the Black Lagoon, but he's even taller, damn it. That's crazy. But here we have him alongside the NECA, Universal Monsters Frankenstein, and Creature from the Black Lagoon. I love this creature figure. NECA, man, they really jump to another level with these two figures right here. This Prey Predator and this creature are definitely like a level up from the awesome stuff that NECA has already been doing for years. And then here we have him alongside the Marvel Legends comic book Venom with the custom head from Casting Cave. On the opposite side, we have the Mafex Dark Knight Returns Batman. And then last but not least, of course, here we have him alongside the Marvel Legends Bucky Cap and Marvel Legends Renew Your Vows Spider-Man. And then as far as the articulation goes, this guy has a lot of good stuff going on. And you know what? I think that he might be the most articulated NECA Predator figure that I've seen so far. I don't have every single one, but out of the like 10 or 11 that I have, it seems like he has more articulation than all of them. So that is awesome to see. And a big part of that is because of the design, you know. It's stripped down, it's primitive, it doesn't have like a bunch of armor and technology and all that kind of stuff. So things are a little bit more free to move around. But not only that, there's also additional points of articulation that I haven't seen on other NECA Predators. So a lot of good stuff. But let's go ahead and get into it starting off at the head. So... He has movement at the upper neck and at the lower neck, and that's not something that I've seen on a Predator figure before from NECA. And again, it has to do with the design, you know, because this guy has like a <laughs> super long neck. Look at that. So he has movement at the lower neck, which allows his head to move up and down just right there, and then he has movement at the upper neck. So using both of those, he could look up a really good amount, and more importantly, he could look down a really good amount. So he could kind of stare down at his victims. And then he could also tilt his head a really nice amount. So like when he chops someone's head off, he could look at the body all proud of what he did, you know. Like, look at me, I did a good job. 
So that's nice. And then you could also rotate the head on that upper joint, rotate the neck. Look at that. Oh, man, have them kind of looking to the side. That's awesome. So really good stuff at the head and the neck. And then for the torso, he has a diaphragm cut and then a ball joint at the waist. And using both of those, we get some really nice movement to the side. Bam. Could go back to about right there, which is really good. And then he could go forward to about right there. You kind of have to work it. Oh, man, this is awesome. Look at that. Boom. So pretty good movement going forward. It would be nice to get a little bit more out of the torso. I kind of want to pop it open and see if I could just cut out a little bit of the plastic to get a little bit more range so that maybe he could get into a crouching position or something. But, you know, it's definitely not necessary. There's a, a more than respectable amount of range on there. Bam. And then you could also twist at the waist or twist at the diaphragm. And then for the arms, he does have ball joints at the shoulder, so his arms can go all the way around. And then you could bring his arms up to about right there, which is pretty nice. Sorry, the Predator is a little tall, so it's hard to fit him his whole body into the frame, but it's all good. And then he does have upper bicep swivel. He has double jointed elbows, boom, that bend to right there. And this does swivel, the, for, the forearm armor thing. That swivels, but it was kind of tight on mine. I did have to heat both sides up and kind of pop it apart. But once I did that, you know, then it's able to move with no problem. And the hand has a swivel as well. And then it can hinge up and down. And then for the legs, he has like ball joints at the hips here. And, you know, he does have a lot of stuff going on here. NECA has their typical setup where they have this piece that comes down and covers the ball joint. But not only that, he does have, like, his belt and stuff, so, or his loincloth. But even with all that stuff, he could kick forward a pretty decent amount. Then he could kick to the side a really nice amount. So that's nice. Boom. Oh. Could go back to about right there. And he does have upper thigh swivel very nicely hidden on the inside there. He has double jointed knees. Boom, that bend to right there. That's pretty good. Doesn't go all the way, but still a really good amount. And then he also has ball joints at the ankles. That's another thing I don't think I've seen on a Predator figure. I think the, the Stone Heart uh, Predator might have that, but... I just figured because he was so big, they had to change it there. But maybe it's something they're going to do on all the Predator figures, which is nice because then we get like rotation in there. Bring his foot forward to right there, come up to right there. Then you have rocking ankles. So good stuff. But yeah, man, like I said, he's got some great articulation. Probably the most articulated Predator. Let me know if I'm wrong. You know, like I said, I don't have every single Predator figure. I have quite a few and they all have very similar articulation. His seems to be pretty different from theirs. In a good way, you know? Seems like they uh, stepped it up a notch in the articulation department with this guy. Especially with the torso and the neck, you know? All that stuff moves really well. So yeah, really good stuff in the articulation department. And it's definitely the most fun I've had playing around with a Predator figure. They really did a great job with it. Alrighty, so overall, at the end of the day, when the smoke clears, the dust settles, and it's all said and done... Man, I think I love every single thing about this figure. I don't think I would want anything to be different. NECA pretty much executed this figure flawlessly. I love everything about it, man. They did such a great job. The figure looks amazing, but obviously that's no surprise. NECA always makes their figures look amazing. There's a whole lot of detail, paint, sculpt, all that good stuff is there. Just like always, NECA freaking killed it with that stuff. And then with the accessories, there's all kinds of great stuff. A bunch of different hands, a bunch of different weapons, you know, like retracted versions of his weapons. And then we have three different face options, the removable helmet. There's all kinds of ways that you could display this guy. And each one of them looks badass. It's kind of hard to find a preferred look because every single, like any way that you put him, he's going to look freaking amazing. 
And then as far as the articulation, that's really where this guy caught me by surprise. You know, I have a bunch of NECA Predator figures, so I'm pretty familiar with their articulation, but I was so happy to see that they added a little bit more in this guy, like that neck articulation, the ankles, the torso, all that stuff moves a little bit more than we've seen on previous NECA Predator figures. And obviously a lot has to do with the design, you know, that kind of allows him to have more range in the joints and things like that. But they also added some articulation, so that's so awesome to see, and he's definitely one of the most fun Predator figures to pick up and play with and pose around. So that was definitely a huge pleasant surprise and yeah, man, I freaking love this thing. NECA freaking killed it, man. Two in a row. Like, NECA always does a great job, but like this and the creature from the Black Lagoon felt like they're like on another level, you know? NECA already does an amazing job with pretty much everything they do, and it feels like they're kind of leveling up with some of these recent releases. So yeah, man, I'm so happy with the way this guy turned out. Once again, huge thank you to AV Pop Shop for sending this over to me early. I'm all hyped up, all excited. I couldn't have done this review without you hooking it up, so thank you so much. And with that, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Also, be sure to hit the bell notification so you know every time that I go live. Thank you very much. Peace.